So our hearts are broken today. We saw some of the bullets going past the hall. As a country, we have been through this too many times. Beautiful little kids between the ages of five and 10 years old. They had their entire lives ahead of them. Birthdays, graduations, weddings, kids of their own. The most traumatic event I've ever experienced or even considered, it is unthinkable and uh, we're all hurting here. These neighborhoods are our neighborhoods and these children are our children. And we're gonna have to come together and take meaningful action to prevent more tragedies like this, regardless of the politics. A Connecticut town forever changed by a deadly school shooting comes together tonight. Hundreds attended a vigil for the 27 victims, including 20 children who have now all been identified. The school's principal is among those killed. Gunman Adam Lanza's motive is still unclear. He shot his mother inside the home he shared with her, then went to the school where we've heard she taught kindergarten and opened fire on two classrooms before killing himself. Police say he suffered from a personality disorder. And a discussion about school security, something every parent wants to know about in a situation like this. That's where we start our team coverage tonight. KITV's Karen Kiley and on how Culver Rubius dug into school security at two central Texas districts. But we want to start with Adam Rakuzin, who's live at the state capitol right now with how schools around the state are preparing in case a tragedy like this happens here. Adam. And tonight we've learned that Governor Rick Perry has asked the education commissioner to have school districts across the state evaluate their emergency operation plans. Texas actually has a school center for the state which deals with preparedness. Their role is to help districts across the state with information and education on how to best prepare for and against an emergency. He shot bam, 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 and like he didn't stop until his clip was empty. As in a society today in which we live, we have to be prepared. We have to know the reality. Okay. Stay calm. I'm on my way, Mr. Lock your door and get your kids away from the windows. A reality that's become all too real. 27 lives lost this morning in Connecticut, 20 of them children. It's a reality Texas is taking steps to prepare for and prevent. All school districts in Texas are required to create emergency operations plans to uh, ensure that those are carried out, uh, to assess those and to practice those drills and exercises necessary. The plans get laid out at the Texas School Safety Center in San Marcos, a resource center charged with mapping out school safety information, research, training and assistance to prepare for an emergency. Everyone, quiet now, please get down. There is a, an incident happening in our school right now. In this instructional video from the Texas Attorney General's website, it outlines roles administrators and students should take in case of an active shooter scenario. Sit down, now. Online, there's a comprehensive breakdown on school safety standards, preparedness drills, guidelines set out for K through 12 campuses statewide. It's a best practice guide for what schools should do to be proactive and um, basically ensuring the safety of their students and staff. A reference guide for school staff breaks down what to do in a campus lockdown and for students educational conferences to show them how to take charge in frightening situations. Some of them are actually charged with helping and responding to emergencies on their campus. And the safety center was set up after the deadly Columbine High School shooting back in 1999. They have annual conferences, send out flyers and are really there for help with anyone who has questions on how to help kids stay safe in school. We're live at the state capitol, Adam Rakusen, KITV News. There are no easy answers with this type of tragic news, especially when it comes to talking to children about it. So how do you address it? Experts say it's important to listen to your child and to try to explain what's happened in an honest, age-appropriate way.
Most adults view this mass shooting as an unthinkable tragedy in an unlikely place, an elementary school in a small, safe town. But children see and process news in a very different, more personal way, often defining it to include their own lives. Therapists say that's why it's so critical to open the lines of communication with your kids. You want to be the person as the parent or the responsible person in that child's life you want to be the person who they know I can go to and I can get straight, honest answers. But that conversation should be tailored to your child's age. Sometimes less is more, especially when it comes to very young children. I think important thing is for parents to remember that when they're talking to five-year-olds or under, their approach needs to be a little bit different. So their conversation needs to be a little bit shorter, matter of fact. When they're talking about it, they shouldn't show too much concern. You know, they need to be authentic, real, but not too much concern or too much panic. There are no hard, fast rules on explaining the unexplainable, but experts suggest certain strategies to help. Find out what your child already knows. Acknowledge their concerns and questions. Give them simple information they need to try to understand what's happened. Sometimes a few sentences are enough. Recognize and validate your children's feelings and do your best to comfort them. And most important, listen. The best thing that we can do is to close our mouths and open our ears and really listen to what they are bringing forth to us. Therapists tell me it's often difficult for children to understand something is not an immediate threat to them. So it's your job to remind them today's tragedy is very rare. It happened far away from here and reassure them you and other adults in their world are working hard to keep them safe. As this investigation into what happened continues, there is no doubt their school districts will be looking very closely at Sandy Hook Elementary to see if there are any safety changes needed at our schools here in Central Texas to keep this from happening here. KITV's Karen Kiley is live in Leander now with this angle of the story. And Karen, there are reports tonight that Sandy Hook had recently implemented new security at the school. And Ron, that's according to reports coming out of Connecticut tonight that the principal at Sandy Hook had recently implemented new security measures. Things like asking staff to stop visitors that they didn't recognize and ask for ID or lock the front door and the front gate, forcing visitors to go to the front desk and check in. Now, a lot of those things are already in place here at Leander schools and in school districts across the state, but today they weren't enough to stop a gunman in Connecticut. It was just such horrible, horrible news that someone could go in and slaughter an entire classroom of children, like helpless children. I mean, destroying all these families' lives. The thought alone is enough to make Stephanie Johnson shudder. The mother of an 11th and 7th grader waited with dozens of other parents to pick up her kids, relieved to be taking them home safe and sound. Student safety is, is the most important thing that we do every day, and so we're always going to try to improve that. For Leander ISD, the tragedy in Connecticut will serve as another opportunity to review security measures. In the past, shootings like Columbine 13 years ago have made drastic changes to the way schools and police respond to an active gunman. It's, it, you know, it's unbelievable, and it's happening just so often. Parents like Tina McCarthy are at a loss for how to prevent such violence, but worry that fear could now create a knee-jerk reaction, taking security measures at elementary schools way too far. What are you going to do, search people like you at an airport? I don't, I don't know what you could do that wouldn't take away from that safe, comforting environment that we want to have for our kids. I, I honestly don't know how you prevent this. I, I think we're doing it already. Uh, I think there's already several security measures in place already. I truly don't think there's a, a way to prevent something like this. I think that uh, unfortunately we're, we're in a society where we're always going to have senseless acts of violence. Now, many middle and high schools already have a police presence on campus, but most elementary schools do not have a full-time police officer at the school. And again, a lot of the parents I talked to said that police officers, metal detectors, those things just might be too much for the elementary school level. Again, it's a difficult thing to figure out security for these schools. But again, in the coming weeks, school districts from across the state are going to be looking at what happened in Connecticut to see if there are any lessons that can be learned from today's incident. And on how that's what you talked to AISD about today and they've already taken steps to look into this incident. 
Right, Karen, the massacre at the elementary school provoking AISD police to remind parents and students of the security measures in place at all district schools, including here at Cook Elementary in North Austin. But they also want to remind parents and students to stay alert. The tragedy at Sandy Hook Elementary has put school security in sharp focus. Okay. AISD police and emergency management personnel will be closely monitoring the investigation. So whenever we have a critical incident like this, uh, which is considered an incident of national significance, uh, we do take a look at it. They will be conducting an after action review to see where the district may be able to improve procedures and security tactics to ensure students, faculty and staff are safe. If there is something through this incident after after an investigation that we can um, tweak or do our policy, you know, add to our policy to enhance our security, absolutely, we're going to do that. AISD police wanting parents to know they have officers at every middle school and high school campus, officers patrolling elementary schools on a daily basis, and conducting drills throughout the year with staff and students. That prepares our students and our staff that to understand if they have to evacuate a school or if there is a lockdown situation, they're going to know where to go. School officials also say doors at all school campuses are locked during school hours, except for the front door to allow visitors in. Any person that comes to one of our schools, we they must check in at the front office. Okay, And, that, and we in, po in the process of that checking in, we have a management system that screens people that come into our schools. What can parents do themselves? How can they take action? Uh, the best thing that a parent can do is just uh, maintain vigilance. Okay, Just be aware of any sort of suspicious activity uh, that they see or they run across at their schools, at their kids' schools. And folks, AISD police tell me they do have a system in place to be able to contact local law enforcement, staff, students, and parents immediately in case any major situation happens at any of the schools district-wide. We're live in North Austin, Angel Covarrubias, KITV News. Thank you, Angel. Training for tragedy. We train the police officers to get there fast and stop the violence. Coming up next, how police officers here in Central Texas should know what to do in case we have a mass shooting in one of our schools. Plus social media buzz, the outcry about school security on Facebook and on Twitter. Also a candlelight tribute, the message these people hope to send as they mourn today's school shooting victims. And change blowing in right now. You may have felt it if you stepped outside tonight. Troy's tracking our chances for rain this weekend. We had to ensure that we accounted for every single student in that school, and that includes maybe someone that was absent for the day because of illness and didn't come to school. A Connecticut police spokesman explains how difficult it is to respond to the second deadliest school shooting in U.S. history and why it could take until tomorrow before everyone is identified. America is tragically no stranger to mass shootings, and here in Texas we've seen some of the worst. The infamous UT Tower shootings in 1996 left 16 people dead, plus the shooter Charles Whitman. And in Colleen in 1991, a gunman killed 23 people at a Luby's cafeteria before turning the gun on himself. And most recently, the 2009 massacre at Fort Hood that claimed 13 lives. One Central Texas agency is working to prepare law enforcement for the next instance of census violence. For 10 years now, the Texas governor's office has been funding a rapid response training program here in Central Texas called ALERT. And due to this program, our officers and first responders know exactly what to do in the case of a mass shooting. KITV's Ashley Miller shows us how this program is working to share this crucial knowledge with other communities. 27 people dead, the second worst mass casualty shooting in U.S. history. It's just heartbreaking is what it is. The alert program here in Central Texas works to minimize the severity of incidents like Connecticut school shooting. We train the police officers to get there fast and stop the violence. Local Central Texas officers regularly participate in exercises to work on their reactions and teamwork in the case of a school shooting or terrorist attack, even a biological incident. And directors of ALERT have decided to share this crucial information in a book to be released by next year. We talk about how we train police officers, the methodologies behind them, and we also go over some of the events that have happened and get in some real details about how they happened and what the law enforcement response was 
and what we learn from those events. Not only is it important for law enforcement to prepare, but also schools. A Colorado father who lost his daughter in a school shooting established a free downloadable program for administrators. There are some weaknesses in how schools handle these kind of events. There were the inconsistent policies, procedures, so he developed uh, the I Love You Guys Foundation. Four simple protocols faculty can teach students to keep casualties to a minimum. Ashley Miller, KITV News. For information on the I Love You Guys Foundation, look for Ashley's story on our website, KITV.com. Today's event sparked a conversation about school security here in Central Texas on our Facebook page. Lisa said, I think schools need to start locking and chaining up the door during school hours. And Tiffany wrote, maybe they should put up a gated fence between the door that goes to the office and the rest of the school. That way people have to go to the office to get access to the rest of the school. Want to quickly turn our attention now to the weather and some chances for rain on the way. Here's KITV Storm Tracker Chief Meteorologist Troy Kimmel and Troy some big changes to be aware of for the weekend plans. And you've seen details of that, Ronnie, so far today. Lots of clouds around. The rain has not amounted to very much, and unfortunately, I do not expect it's going to amount to much over the weekend. First stop, Storm Tracker Viper on a Friday night in the 10 o'clock hour. We've got some showers off the northwest. You folks up uh, in Mason and Llano counties off to the north and west of the area. A couple of showers up to the north of you now. This runs out here just a little bit west and northwest of Land Passes. The showers up along the Red River, Dallas, Fort Worth area. The best lift in the atmosphere with this whole system is going to remain to the north of the area. But nevertheless, let's watch it. What are our models showing us? Our microcast model for the overnight hours does drive some of that shower activity by about 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning to our northwest counties. And there's a very thin line of showers about daybreak tomorrow morning, about 7 a.m., 8 o'clock hour. And that's really kind of it. This is not going to produce very much. Maybe you folks over the hill country getting a little more with that as we go into the uh, Saturday period. But the rain chances overall really pretty slim, about a 20% chance highs in the 70s in the mid 70s tomorrow afternoon for the area. Here's a look at the water vapor imagery an upper level low here. There's another one bake way out here to the west. Folks, we've got to get these past the area. It's going to take a couple of days to do that, draw drier air in locally. Right now these are temperatures 69 at Round Rock, 71 out at Bergstrom, 70 at Pflugerville now, 69 at Rollingwood, Georgetown now at 70, 70 in San Marcos and across the state. Again, a front out west, but you got to get the upper level low pressure through here. Two centers of them. We'll finally get some drier air Sunday and then a couple of fronts for next week. The main chance of rain. Again, a few sprinkles, some drizzle and fog out at Austin Bergstrom International Airport. First thing in the morning, visibility somewhere between a half and three miles. So we're going to see that visibility drop. The drier air finally arrives with a second front early, uh, late tomorrow night and early Sunday. Then we'll see some clearing. And again, a couple of fronts as we make our way through next week. So 20% overnight, a little fog and drizzle, and 62 will be the overnight low. Same thing for tomorrow, morning fog and drizzle, clouds, and a 20% chance where you are. Again, with some rain showers, and again, maybe some lower visibilities. First thing in the morning, take care, 75 for the afternoon high. Tomorrow night's low around 56. Chance of showers and storms again Sunday morning, and then we'll see the drier air come in. Look what happens. Another front Wednesday, but again, too dry for any precipitation. Again, Ron Judy, I told you earlier at 6, looks impressive with that 40% chance Sunday, but I just don't see any more than about a quarter of an inch of rain. That's not going to do us that much good. We'll take any rain any way we can get it. But this is still a generally dry forecast for South Central Texas. That's too bad. Yeah. It really is. Thank you, Troy. Honor the victims. Coming up next, how people across the country are coming together to pay tribute to those young lives lost in the Connecticut school shooting today. Evil visited this community today. Um, and it's too early to speak of recovery. Talk tonight about grieving and coming together from Connecticut Governor Daniel Malloy after today's school shooting. We want to bring you now up to date with the latest on this tragic shooting. The rest of the 27 people who died at the school could be identified as soon as tomorrow. The ch ch 20 children have now been identified. Police are not saying what may have motivated the gunman, 20-year-old Adam Lanza, to go on the shooting rampage before killing himself. A law enforcement official says he was believed to suffer from a personality disorder. The guns used in the shooting were obtained legally. Lanza is reportedly the son of a teacher at the elementary school, but now her teaching status is being questioned.
Want to take a live look now at our state capitol building where flags are at half staff tonight to honor the victims of the shooting. The same goes for flags at area schools as well. And in Washington, D.C., a vigil tonight to honor those shooting victims. Families of gun violence victims organized this event at Lafayette Park near the White House. This group is calling for President Obama to take action to end gun violence. We saw like police officers and we heard them on the roof and in our building. Innocent stolen. Next, we reflect on those powerful young voices and the horror they witnessed and heard today. It was terrifying. It's, it's, I'm still terrified. I think I'm still in shock about it all. The images of the school shooting today are something parents, students, and teachers at an elementary school where a gunman took 27 lives will really have to live with for the rest of their lives. We now want to take a moment to reflect on those powerful images and voices of today. When I was getting in my car, I heard sirens going off continuously car after car after car. Some of them were flying up past my house and coming back around again and going to the school. This house is three houses away from the school. When we first arrived there, there was not a lot of security to uh, guard. And there were three children that came out. Uh, one of them was, had a very bloody face. We immediately jumped in the car and headed down here, so it's um, uh, troubling. I was really kind of mayhem in the room with all the kids and the teachers, trying to find your kid, identify where yours is, making sure that they're safe, and then trying to find out what the situation was and make sure everybody else was safe. It started with the neighbors and then the rest of their, their friends in school and that sort of thing, so it's... Um, what did your set of daughters say to you when they first cut it? Next with you? They, they were immediately crying, you know, petrified of what happened and what did it mean. And I think they're both they're both older than some of the other kids in the school, so understanding you know, understanding what happened. My son was in the gym uh, when it happened, so I think that he heard they heard the gunshots. We saw like police officers and we heard them on the roof and in our building. Did you hear any gunshots or anything like that? Um, well, police officers, like, they were, they were kind of, because there's police officers, like, right out the door, like, trying to find the guy. It was uh, shocking. I got the call at work this morning, and uh, I can't believe a small town like this would ever have anything like this happen. And to be in an elementary school, that's unheard of. It doesn't even seem real. It just does not seem like it's even possible. It's like you... You know, you read it in the paper, or see it in the news, you're like, oh my God, that poor family. And then you have it, something happen so close to home. It's like, I think I'm still in shock. It was terrifying. It's, it's, I'm still terrified. I think I'm still in shock about it all. Was everybody crying, scared, yeah. wanting their parents to come get them? Yeah, they were. And then some people were even like, they, they kind of felt like they got a stomach ache. Well, they wouldn't even let us in the building. All I can say is that one of the cops said it's, you know, the worst thing he'd ever seen in his entire career. But it was when they told the parents, all these parents were waiting for their children to come out. They thought that they were, you know, still alive. There's 20 parents that were just told that their children are dead. It was awful. It certainly was an awful, awful day. Those parents waiting outside with I no can, answers. I can't imagine. It's, mm. it's incredibly sad. And we'll be right back with some final thoughts. As it did on 9-11, life has changed for many after today's shooting in Connecticut. Americans, both young and old, are coming to grips with an event that has torn families apart. As President Obama put it, our hearts are broken. There is senseless violence. There is tragedy. Then there's the unthinkable violence that defies explanation. How do you explain a classroom full of five-year-olds gunned down? Somewhere between snack time and recess, our world changed. Policies and procedures will be reviewed. Politicians will call for reforms, but we shouldn't forget that rhetoric, pointing fingers, and the usual antics of political theater won't resurrect the 26 victims in Newtown, Connecticut. Parents will look into little eyes and reassure them that they are safe and sound, but we know things are very different. As we go Christmas shopping and celebrate the holidays, let's not forget the little ones, the teachers who lost their lives and the families grieving. This holiday season, those touched by this terrible tragedy need support, justice, and above all, love. Indeed, love. Well said, Ron. Mm. In some ways, we have all been touched by this tragedy. Please have a safe, happy weekend with your family. Hug your kids tonight. Good night.